<laughs> Women try to force themselves on me and I get very frightened. <laughs> What's going on, boys? Middle of the night, no fans on, dead silence, thin walls. <laughs> Today we're talking about Hentai Femdom Simulator Femdom University. A game recently released on Steam. If you are a sub, male or female, there's something here for you to enjoy. Whether your interests are general or more specific. The game covers a wide range of tags and it covers them well. My roommate just left. He locked his door and walked the fuck out. Wow! If you're familiar with porn games, you might be expecting this to be a short little thing, a few scenes strung together with barely any gameplay. But this isn't the case. This game is a game. I have 16 hours in it right now, and I've only just now finished one line, as far as it goes. So how is the game played? Well, gameplay can be broken up into a few segments. First and foremost is living, the struggle. Each week you'll need to pay rent, unless you want to be living out in the garbage. Which is an option, you don't need to pay if you want to live out in the garbage, but you will be scavenging clothes and food from garbage cans, you'll be homeless, you'll be stinky, and how stinky you are is a mechanic. You'll need to worry about hydration and nutrition, you'll need to worry about winning or losing battles. This game isn't easy and it isn't fair. It isn't supposed to be. If you want to be strong to win fights, you need to be careful. If you lose fights, people steal your stuff, they steal your XP, you get the shit kicked out of you, you get bullied by any number of living tags. You'll need to worry about your reputation with the different groups at the university and in the city, or out in the wild, if that's more of your thing. You'll need to worry about individual rep with named characters, specific individual tags. This is called their dominance, not their rep, and you'll want that in the green, not the red. I made the mistake of thinking you could progress if you lowered someone's dominance, but that isn't the case. I beat the shit out of the manipulative tomboy too many times, and wondered why the game wasn't progressing until I realized dominance means how much more they are willing to do, how much farther they are willing to go with you. There are two skill trees you can level. Jim Bro Screaming and Farting Compilation and Sigma Male Grind Set. Controlling your physical attributes, and your finances, respectively. You'll need to figure out how to earn money, either traditionally working a job, or scavenging, becoming the trash lord. Because rent, like real life, is very expensive. And if you want to succeed, you need more money and you need it quickly. Unless you don't want to succeed. One of the nice things about this game is you never really lose. No matter how far... Oh, I take that back. There is one instance you can 100% completely lose. You'll want to keep an eye out for that. But under most other circumstances, you never completely lose. No matter how far you fall, you can always drag yourself back up out of the depths. Or you can stay in them if that's more your thing. The game caters to whatever you're looking for. The other important section of the game 
is the dominance and submission scenes. In these, you will need to tap buttons quickly or in specific orders to win or not die. And they are difficult. They are as difficult as the living social sim survival gameplay. The game is meant to be difficult. You're meant to lose. Sometimes. You can win, but you are meant to be fighting an uphill battle. I've seen people complaining about how hard the game is, and how much of a game the game is. But remember, this is not just a turn it on, get off, turn it off porn game. You are investing yourself in a mindset. The game builds an atmosphere through its mechanics, so you are invested. You have things to lose. You have things that can be taken from you and will be taken from you. If you don't understand what I mean, let's look at Skyrim's vibrant S&M community. Many of the bondage mods for Skyrim involve binding you and dropping you places and making you walk long distances slowly because you're tied up you can barely move trying to figure out how to get out of your binds unable to speak you're gagged you can't use your hands how are you supposed to get out that seems tedious and it is it's designed to be those mods are designed to be the idea is to create a feeling of helplessness or submission mechanically taking away what you should be able to do, or what you have worked to achieve. Hentai Femdom Simulator Femdom University, hell of a title, does the exact same thing. Maybe a bit less tedious in some areas and more tedious in others, but dominance and submission through mechanics is the name of the game. Getting dominated hurts because you aren't just watching something play out or reading something play out so you can get off. You are trying not to starve. You are trying to pay rent. You are trying to save money and get stronger so you can progress further in the game. But it isn't all brutal. It seems that way at first. The more you progress down different storylines, the more your options open up. If you have a problem, there is probably someone in the game who can help you solve it if you find them and work with them, or work for them. Dignity in an empty sack is worth the sack. If you want to succeed, you'll need to debase yourself a bit. But, the further you go and the stronger you become, the more of a say you have in your own debasement, or if you're debased at all. Which makes some moments even more stressful because you will get caught off guard. You will be unprepared sometimes, and you have things to lose. So, the gameplay loop ends up becoming day-to-day -day trying to pay rent or afford whatever you need to progress your storylines, leveling yourself both with XP to gain levels to make yourself stronger, or in your talents so you can become physically or financially stronger, so you can access the scenes or characters you want and unlock even more tools so you can get further down other lines. The gameplay and the characters, everything connects. Everything serves a purpose. Everything is intentional. This is one of the most thoughtfully designed 
indie games I've ever seen. It uses mechanics to create an atmosphere. And every time I was thinking, well, this is annoying, or I wish there were a different way to do this, soon after, I found a character or a method which would help me fix that problem. If you're learning too slowly, get your science friend to make you some psilocybin tea, the materials for which you got from the goblins. If you are annoyed with how long it takes to travel through the woods, get raped by a horse. If you are sick of modern society and the daily grind, reject industrialized society and embrace feminist primitivism. If you're struggling to stay hydrated without access to your apartment and your tap water, Tomboy's friend might have some water for you. If you're sick of digging through the garbage and eating scraps, there's probably a way to stretch a little bit of food out a lot longer and make it last. If you're tired of working for your boss for money, or grinding the hobo economy and becoming the trash baron, turn the game into Metal Gear presented by President Matsudo. You'll earn a lot of money. Before we move forward, there are a few things worth pointing out about the mechanics you'll need to know if you choose to buy this game. Firstly, there is a bug which disables full screen. It'll probably get patched soon. The developer seems to be adding all sorts of features right now. But if it doesn't, and your game turns windowed and you can't turn it back, there is a piece of software called Borderless Gaming. I'll link it in the description. It's useful, not just for this game in case it bugs out, but for everything. It's a good purchase. You'll probably want to have it moving forward, whatever you end up doing. Second thing, your inventory. You'll know something is highlighted in your inventory because there are blue squares around what you've highlighted. Now sometimes when you move off your inventory screen, things will still be highlighted. And if you click to try to get out of the menu or to try to get to a different menu, you will consume that item you don't want to do that. Some items are very expensive or rare. To fix that, just wiggle your mouse across the inventory screen until the blue squares go away. Exploration is useful. If the game feels limiting or too hard, explore around a while. Remember, barring one thing, there is no way you can 100% lose. Explore. Find options. Once you have options, use them to make the game faster or easier. If you've done that and the game still seems too hard or too slow, raise your reputation with factions. Each faction has a different way of raising rep or losing rep. Raise your or raise others' dominance over you. Think of it not as dominance, but as reputation. You don't want it in the red, if you want access to better means of money making, better means of XP gaining, better means of travel. Raise those levels, the game will smooth out. If you are still having trouble, you can find the developer each day without too much effort, and raise one of your bars to maximum. It's worth keeping in mind if you are having a really hard time. Another thing, there is a buried treasure. You'll know it when you see it. You don't need a shovel to access it. Go ahead and get that as early as you can. It'll make things easier. The way this game is played reminds me of the way Mandalore described Sunless Sea. If you feel like you're spinning tires and not making much progress, which you will if you let yourself fall into a rut, play smarter, not harder. Look around, experiment, don't be afraid to lose, 
because you can't really lose. Now we will move into the scenes. The reason you saw this game, the reason you're probably buying it until the gameplay hooks you. Tags are abundant. If you're into Femdom, you'll find something you like. And going into it, you'll need to understand the atmosphere first. You will see things you aren't super into or comfortable with, but you will probably understand the appeal of it if you actually are into these things. My biggest vice is macro, and being into macro means you end up into quite a few adjacent things. I suspect people with other interests fall into or under the same umbrella. Regardless of what you are specifically into, the idea of powerlessness is almost everywhere, but not in the overdone, over-the-top sense which ruins dominance for most media and most doms because they're embarrassing and they're just trying to force things on you without actually making what's happening believable. In this game, you can play into the suspension of disbelief to the max if you want to, but you don't need to. And that's what makes it so stressful, realistic, and appealing. Because it's not, fuck you, you're worthless 100% of the time. It's, unless you want it to be. Otherwise, you'll get lulled into a false sense of confidence, and then what you have will be taken from you unless you're willing to do things you are uncomfortable with. Which is the name of the game. That's what makes it good. It's believable. You can suspend your disbelief if you want to, but if you don't want to, you don't have to. Furthermore, I've seen people complain that you can't enable or disable tags. You can't tailor your interests to your experience. That's not true. While there is not a way to go into the settings and turn certain tags on or off, you can choose what you do or don't get up to. The only things you can't are the most basic S&M stuff. The most basic. And if you can't appreciate them, why are you buying this game in the first place? Further, if you choose to engage in more specific interests, maybe not even your specific interests, there are mechanical benefits. The more you broaden your horizons, the easier and more forgiving the game becomes. If there were an option to toggle certain characters or kinks on and off, you would be breaking the game's balance or making things that much harder for yourself. And some quests, some factions, some characters do have a bit of overlap. So if you start pulling strings, the whole sweater comes undone. If you're going into this, go into it with an open mind. And go into it with the expectation your interest will be catered to well, even if it is specific. I don't know how the developer did it, but some things, I haven't seen all the kinks, but some of them are handled 
with what seems to be either experience and understanding, which is what you're looking for if you want to get off, or consultation from someone who does understand or has experience. For example, good macro is hard enough to find as it is. I don't think there is a game that handles macro with this much freedom, with this much mechanical integration in this way. I don't think one exists. There are other games, there are little RPG maker games, or visual novel type games, but there is no, there are no mechanics attached to them. So the scenes might be cool, the scenes might be nice, you might like them, but you're not invested. The reason this game succeeds is because it attaches your interests to the game's mechanics, so you are invested in trying to get better at whatever it is, whatever minigame or gameplay loop your mechanic demands from you to progress. For example, for the beginning part of the game, I had been investing in business becoming the trash master, trying to get the most money out of the garbage I could. But once I finally decided to engage in the macro scenes, which I put off for a long time, I realized my character is too slow to succeed, and I needed to adjust my leveling strategy so my dude wouldn't be too slow to win. But dying is fun. Losing is fun. Whether you win or lose, you will be rewarded, but if you want to succeed mechanically, you need to engage in mechanics. And by engaging in mechanics, you'll not only succeed with mechanics, you'll also gain access to even more scenes. And the fact you need to work on your character to get better at whatever your kink is makes the scenes feel more real. There are kinks and characters who will beat the shit out of you if you haven't leveled correctly. The game tells you not to trust people sometimes. If you're stupid and still trusting, you reap what you sow and you lose benefits. If you decide not to stand up for yourself when maybe you should, you will have to deal with the consequences of your decision. If you stand up for yourself a little too much, a little too often, you might temporarily lock yourself out of progression in other areas. The models can be a bit janky sometimes, but that should be okay for you, right? You grew up watching MMD stuff because normal porn didn't cater to your interests. You're used to janky models. It'll be fine. And I'll state it again because I'm concerned I didn't make it clear enough. You aren't looking at porn 24-7. You aren't engaging in your interests 24-7 until you reach a certain level with different characters. But the reason this game's scenes succeed is because you need to work for them. If you want to get what you want, you need to commit to the grind, to the atmosphere to stress, and the game is stressful, you'll lose. That's what makes the payoff worthwhile. And you'll be surprised with how well things are handled once the payoff comes. I think submission is a mindset a lens to view the world from, not a place you go and engage in one thing and then walk away. That's what this game does. It creates a mental framing for you to engage in. No matter where you go or what you do in this game, 
dominance and submission are on your mind and the spectrum of dominance and submission pretty much the whole thing is covered the all-encompassingness of the submission in this game the levels you will be reduced to or will reduce yourself to to progress is a testament to how mindsetty this game is this game is worth a buy you will feel uncomfortable you're meant to you will lose you're meant to stick with it play smart and immerse yourself in the mindset and you'll have a good time both in terms of getting off and in playing a game I wouldn't have sunk 16 hours into it if the gameplay loop weren't fun it's a good mixture between chilling surviving grinding and doing your thing and surprise and stress the realness of some of the situations in the sense I'm not suspending my disbelief I got stuck in this what the fuck is happening oh my god let me out of this it's good that's what you're here for but that about rippity wraps this one up I hope you enjoyed watching because I certainly enjoyed making it I did but man middle of the night fans turned off Thin walls, did my roommate really just walk the fuck out the moment I said hentai femdom simulator out loud? Man, like if you enjoyed, because that helps me out a lot. Subscribe if you haven't, because we do this shit sometimes, and comment your thoughts, because I love hearing from you. I used to do a lot of gaming videos on this channel. If you're here, if you're here for it, you're here for it. What do you think? What are your experiences with s and stuff? Weird kinks. We used to talk about this stuff a lot on this channel. Still do sometimes. The paraphilia videos. That's another thing. The one tag I didn't see in this game was NTR. I'm concerned it's still there and I haven't found it yet, but we'll see. But the macro is phenomenal. If another developer were to take a crack at Macro using this developer's thoughtful design, I don't know how much money that developer would make, but it would probably be a lot. Macro people are maniacs. In a good way. But thanks again for watching, everybody. Really? We have a lot of fun on this channel. So much fun, in fact. You could pour that fun across your feet and get someone to lick it off them. Man. Wow. Oh, goodness gracious. I'm putting this online, and you can't remove... anything you post online never goes away. But that's how much fun we have on this channel. And I look forward to doing this with you guys again in... the future.